800-000-5031. A University of Otago study analyzing contact to the National Poison Center by New Zealanders of Pacific ethnicities uh, released today in the New Zealand Medical Journal. Now, the study was a joint project uh, by the University of Otago Center for Pacific Health, Ba'autautai, and the National Poison Center. It's a free 24-7 telehealth service that advises callers on what to do if someone has been exposed to a drug or chemical. The results, well, it revealed that of the poison centers, uh, more than 40,000 patients in 2018 to 2019, just 3.4% were Pacifica, even though Pacifica peoples comprise only 8.1% of the total New Zealand population. Now, the reasons aren't clear. Now, like I said before, we are less than 400,000 of the population, just around 380. So 3.4, 3.5, you're looking at around just under 15,000 amount of people that are calling in. Um, but the Pacific patient cohort, so that means the group of people uh, that are represented in terms of those who call the health line for help on behalf of, is very young. 78% of them are between the age of zero to five. So we're talking about newborn to very, very little people who just find the use of their feet. 70% of that number, exposures occurring due to child exploratory behavior. 96.8% occurring in residential settings. I know it's a bit too many numbers to think of right now, but just highest number, children. Highest reason, behavior. Touching, you know, when you're zero to five, you're crawling on the floor, you're touching this, you're, you're picking that up. And 96% of them happen always, most likely in homes. Now, the most common substances involved in poisonings affecting Pacific patients were simple uh, analgesics such as paracetamol, cosmetics, and miscellaneous household items. Joining me this morning to talk more on the study is Dr. Eva Kompola. She is the research fellow at the National Poison Center at the at the University of Otago. She joins me this morning. Dr. Eva, thank you very much and welcome to the show. And Hiva Homenta. Hiva Homenta, thank you so much for having me on the show. <laughs> Wonderful to be here. Thank you for being here. Look, it's, it's a very important issue. Tell us... Um, from this study that you guys put together, what are some of the takeaways that you are hoping for people to to understand, receive, and integrate into their family lives for our Pacific community, given what we're seeing? This is where we'd, we'd love to sort of get the community's feedback as well, which is what we're hoping to do. But one thing for sure is, is same as for other Kiwis, it's quite often, it's whatever you have at home, the stuff that we all have, like we have cleaning products, we have, at least for the kids, often there's some paracetamol for, you know, if they're teething or something, like you, you just have that kind of stuff at home. So what it then comes down to is perhaps, because I definitely, I always keep my stuff under the sink and that's where kids can get into it uh, because it's just the right height for them. Um, so maybe consider things like, uh, I don't know, could you move them somewhere higher up where kids can't reach them? So I think it's about, about the practical sort of things that we could all think about, like in our homes, like how can I stop those kids? Because they will explore like you like you were saying, like they just naturally, it's it's what they do. That's how they learn. They will touch things. And, and, and if it's an interesting color or something, they will just want to naturally be exploring it. And that's where they can get into trouble. Um, that's, that's yeah, that's how it, it seems to go. Kids just get into stuff. We try and prevent them, but sometimes it happens. And that's where we hope as a service, because we are free and 24-7 available, um, we hope we can help. Well, and, and the fact that these, uh, the little cohort that we're talking about, the zero to five, they just need no permission, right? <laughs> they see a shite burning color, they just run to that yeah. or crawl to it or, or do whatever, exactly. you know. So they don't say, mommy, can I put my hand inside the plug? Yeah. They just do it anyway. <laughs> and now I yes, know that, and we adults, like we're not sort of in the clear either. Like sometimes people might put like, I don't know, they've got like, I don't know, some kind of chemicals and they put them into soda bottles. That's the worst because then someone else, an adult, will just come along and just ch take a chug out of the bottle and, and that just leads into more trouble. So 
yeah, we, we can all sort of think about little things around the home, like um, a lot of bottles would have childproof um, caps. So definitely don't put stuff into other containers that aren't as safe because then kids might just, yeah, if they get older, they might be trying to sort of screw caps as well. Well, of course. I mean, look at uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's the motor skills. It's the touching, the feeling, the you know, the, the, yeah. that's at that age, and yeah. they, they want to know how fingers work. And by the time they get it around, just before one, they're mimicking whatever they see. So you know, and, and this is one of the. Yes. It's like a housekeeping reminder for our Pacific communities. Three point one, uh, three point four percent of the numbers you received between 2018 to 2019. Now, from what you've seen, for a population that is not as much, wait, 8.1%, but 3.4% of the data you receive is represented by us, Pacifica. Is that uh, a concerning number uh, from your perspective as part of the, the Poison Center and what you're hoping for Kiwis to understand? Yes, we are definitely wanting to look into that because there could be, as you said before, we don't know why that is yet, but it's definitely worth looking into because it could be specific Kiwis just don't have poisonings. Well, we don't believe that. Like It's it's not the explanation for it. So maybe it's because people don't know about the service or it could be that people are going elsewhere for advice. Like That could be it as well because... It's voluntary to call the poison center. We're happy to receive calls. It doesn't have to be like, you know, um, super serious. Uh, like there's nothing nothing wrong with just checking with us. Like, we're quite happy. Um, about three, three quarters of our calls actually result in advice that you can manage it at home. So that's why like we, we don't sort of want people to think that it needs to be super serious before calling us. Like if, if a kid got into something, just ring and just check. It's fine. Like it's, we'd, we'd rather you call, and then, you know, we can tell you, oh, it's not a concern. Don't worry. And this is what you can give the kids a bit of milk, or you know, whatever it might be in that case. So, that's definitely something. Like we need to look into why people aren't using the service, perhaps, yeah, and uh, whether there's other ways they are looking for help. Because that's it. Maybe maybe it's all good. I I don't know at this stage. So we definitely want to talk to the community about like what they're choices for um, seeking help if, if a kid does get into something what, what are those choices and that's where we're hoping to collaborate further with Bar Tao Tai just, with, just talk to people about what, mm, what they're doing I think it's more of an awareness thing because to be honest with you uh, Dr. Eva this is okay, the first time yeah. I heard of it <laughs> I heard of uh, the 24-7 yeah. <laughs> um, telehealth service yeah uh, you know because uh, yeah you know how you never really think about something until something happens because I've always wondered huh poison exactly because you yeah. always have home remedies hey what yeah. happened he swallowed something well feed him with something else right home remedies when it comes to yeah, um, yeah. Things like that. what are the details uh, are you able to share with us um, any number or details that people can call since I've got you online this 24-7 telehealth service is that a detail you have with you yes so it's all, all 800 poison which I just because we don't have those phones anymore that have, have the letters and the numbers so I always say all 800 seven six four seven six six so that's the number for it and also if you do actually if you don't remember the number for some reason um it does come up on google i believe if new, in, in, in new zealand if you look for poison it will give our link pretty much first thing but if you for some reason if you don't find it healthline is also able to sort of patch you through to us if it's something that's more sort of our area so but yeah, uh, 0800 764 766, that's the number. And we do actually have like fridge magnets, so <laughs> maybe that's what we could organize as well, like um, just get those to some community centers and people could grab a fridge magnet, maybe that could help, like having it right there on your fridge door could potentially be, um, you know, in that panic when the kid got into something, like you might just find it straight away, that could maybe be something helpful. Or if you're what like you me, reckon? well, yeah. Or if you're like me and you've got the memory of a goldfish, uh, just remember: oh eight hundred poison. Yeah. <laughs> oh eight hundred poison is self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. uh, Doctor Eva, before yeah. I let you go, are there any other um, items that have popped up as part of the the causes of some of the poisonings that are happening in our home? Because I, I I see sometimes when people uh, look you up, they think, mm, I think Doctor Eva doesn't like paracetamol, but it's just the stuff, the way we <laughs> the way we store them that's important because it's not just that; it's little things little things like a paracetamol little yeah. things like a bolt i don't know how that accidentally find its way into a sitting room but you know any other yeah. uh, sort of uh, reasons behind or the calls that you guys are receiving 
Um, well, we do get seasonal things like, like um, especially I think for the Auckland end, like it's quite seasonal when there's sea slugs on the beaches or, or various sort of marine animals that we then see more things because people are on the beaches and, and that's when things can happen. Like you don't notice a hyena somewhere, for example, or something and then step on it. Um, those things, yeah. All right. So even in those cases, it's perfectly fine to ring us. Like we will then be able to just say um, if it looks concerning, like whether you should go and see a doctor or whether there's ways that you could then just manage it at home and look out for something specific. So, yeah, we definitely do see seasonal things and more wasp things in, in summer and uh, plants. That's that's probably also something because in winter it's not as common. So, oh, yeah, well. we do get the occasional call about like um, – just exotic things like like uh, yeah. snakes as well, but they're usually people who come in from Aussie or somewhere and they've come back to New Zealand. Well, I thought those guys are neighbours with their snakes. Anyway, Dr. Eva, yeah. thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you for a reminder. Very important Pacific people. If you're tuning in, don't be the statistics, but be the one who is known to have good housekeeping. You need paracetamol for the adults and for the kids, it's the liquid form. They just don't put them in their mouth. Look, uh, we'll talk to you once again. Happy New Year's, and thank you again for your time. Cheers. Thank you so much. Happy New Year, everyone. 531 PI, Pacific people together.